Almost Famous with John Shea. Featuring local and independent musicians from the South Shore, Boston, and New England. On 95.9 WATD. Welcome to the Tiny Stage Hour of Almost Famous on 95.9 WATD. Introducing you to independent bands and musicians from across New England. Brought to you by Tiny and Sons Glass. First things first, though, if you're a local musician, if you have original music you'd like to get on the radio, get in contact with me. Find all the information at 95.9WATD.com. You can follow us tonight on Facebook and Instagram at Almost Famous Radio and subscribe to our podcast at AlmostFamousRadio.com. So this is our first live show of 2021, and joining us on the tiny stage this evening, we have Sam Luke Chase. How you doing, my friend? Good, John. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. How have you been? I have been good. I've been uh, I've been busy. I got a new EP out, and that's why I'm here. I want to play some new tunes. And I hear a, a new member of the family as well. That's right. I got a baby girl. Her name's Rosie. I uh, I got a few songs that I've written about her, but I'll definitely play one for you. Awesome. So uh, before we get too much further, introduce yourself. Tell us who you are. Uh, I'm Sam Chase. I grew up in Situate, and uh, I live here in Marshfield. And uh, musician, music teacher, and new father. And uh, I've been playing music around here for a long time. And I lived up in Portland, Maine a little bit and play music up there. And I uh, come from a musical family. Uh, my parents play music. My brother plays it full time. My uncle also as well. So I've been here in the studio a few times playing tunes for your show. And I'm excited to be here again. Awesome. Glad to have you back. Thanks. Since the last time you were here, the world has changed just a little bit. A little bit. How has the pandemic affected you and your music? It's, uh, I mean, it's just, you know, aside from just the general, you know, no gigs to play or, you know, things like that. Uh, trying to figure out how to make an income in different ways. Um, for me, it's actually been a nice break from playing because I've been basically just nonstop gigging since I was 21. And I was scared at first, but then it's like kind of been nice to figure out, you know, how to use the time in different ways. Um, I do a lot of teaching and that's been great. It's always sort of been my bread and butter there. And now I just do it virtually. But um, it's given me a lot of time to kind of just like get to enjoy my 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 newborn baby who's now 15 months and uh, just have the time to be with her and, you know, kind of reset a little bit. And I've actually been able to write a few songs just, you know, she'll let me hold the guitar and, and I'll be strumming away and coming up with something. And that's been a nice surprise. So it's actually given me some time to write some new music, which I didn't really think I was going to be able to do. But uh, surprise, here we are. Creativity seems to be a theme throughout this pandemic, which I, I like you said, I think is, is a good thing. It's some positivity in a, in a negative situation. Yeah. I mean, everybody's, you know, trying to express themselves and get on there and, you know, get the virtual tip jar going and all that stuff. And everybody's got to do what they got to do. Um, and, uh, you know, I support anybody that does that for sure. So, um, I, I've, I feel like I'm lucky to be able to like have time to spend with my, my daughter and, you know, have a guitar in my hand and, you know, be able to play with her and then still be able to create. Cause that's just, it makes, it's kind of what makes me feel most alive is to create music. So just about a month ago, towards the end of November, you dropped a brand new EP. Talk about that. It's called old ocean sound volume one. And I have thrown around the idea of an EP just because albums, you know, putting out 11 songs or so songs just get lost. You put so much work into it these days and everybody's streaming things and nobody has the attention span and all that stuff, right? So um, I, I decided to kind of put more of an emphasis on songs that I feel really strongly about in the moment. And um, Old Ocean Sound is the title because I recorded it at home and I live on Old Ocean Street. And uh, Volume 1 is just, you know, to make me have to do a volume two. You know what I'm saying? Understood. Completely. (laughs) Let's do a song. What are we starting off the night with? Uh, This is a song called Does It Sound Crazy? All right. Sam Luke Chase, 95.9 WATD on the tiny stage. Two, three. Enjoy the show Both of us born The youngest in our families It had five kids It's big these days It wasn't easy Nothing's ever easy Till you try Till you try I would chase this love Through a hurricane Drive you across the country California to Maine I wanna live my life With a girl who's got some 
Sam Luke Chase on the tiny stage tonight on 95.9 WATD. Talk about that song. How did that one happen? Uh, that one happened. Um, that one happened very quickly. I was just kind of like messing around with that sort of lick, this sort of thing. Um, I had kind of had it and was, was messing around with it. And I, I had come up with this uh, singing la la di da na na na. That's what I had. That was the initial <laughs> ins- inspiration. And uh, I don't know how it turned into what it turned into. It just, like, I, I think it was, like, does it sound something? And, and uh, it turned into crazy. But then the song itself sort of revealed itself later on. But when, it, when, it, when I started writing the lyrics, it kind of happened, happened fast. I was pleasantly surprised by that one. So Old Ocean Sound is the new EP. How many albums have you released since you've been performing music? I have three full-length albums. And two singles that I released. The singles have uh, put, been put out like each of the last couple of years. And uh, Old Ocean Sound is the newest EP. So four songs in this particular one. Fantastic. In the time that you've been writing music, how do you think your songwriting and even musical taste has evolved over the years? Um, it's it's definitely evolved in terms of you know just my sound my voice my voice has changed since my first album came out um i don't even recognize myself on the first album but i do love playing those songs live but i feel like when i play them now it just they feel different they feel i don't know i just i feel like i was a young person then and now i'm you know 34 year old man now but um i feel like now i'm writing songs that feel the most me They're, they're very um i don't know i just like them i like I don't for you know when I'm writing songs I don't force them they they just kind of like have to happen I'm, I'm not one of these guys who writes every day or or you know peruses lyrics and writes lyrics in a journal or anything like that it just all has to kind of happen magically and so therefore I don't write a lot but when I do I feel like that's this you know these songs like make it onto a onto an album or an EP Have you ever considered going back and re-recording those early songs in the style that you're playing now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I probably will do that if, you know, until we get a vaccine or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, volume two. That's a good idea, John. Um, I mean, I always admired, like, Sting that way, you know, one of my favorite artists. He, he would go back and redo his songs and reinterpret all of his old tunes. He's still doing it, you know. Coming like now, he's still putting out like old songs in new ways, or you know, doing them with new artists because they're great songs. And you know, why wouldn't you keep doing it, right? Stand the test of time. Why not? <laughs> it's redo them. And it's hard. It's hard to uh, hard to write. You know, it's hard to write material that you feel good about and that you feel represents who you are. Um, 
it's easy to just turn the page. You know, you put something out, and then it's like, okay, we need something new, especially in this you know day and age where content, content, content. Got to get something new and and post something fresh. So to redo old songs, I think that's a that's a great idea. I'd love to do that. Let's do another song. What are we listening to next? Uh, this is a tune called Same Old Song. I actually wrote this on the piano one time, um, you know, probably about a year ago, and it then kind of turned into a, a guitar song. So it's called Same Old Song. All right. 95.9 WHD, Sam Luke Chase on the tiny stage. Sam Luke Chase on the tiny stage on 95.9 WATD. So you wrote that song on the piano originally and then translated it to guitar. How do you typically write? Are you melody based, lyric based? Um, I'm always like a sort of, I'm, I'm riff based, I guess. You know, to me, it always starts on the guitar or or the piano. You know, it starts on an instrument and um, I'm always sitting you know, I have to just be kind of like sitting down practicing playing, and that that's always when something might, you know, hear something that I hadn't quite heard me play before, you know? I'm trying to find magic at a certain moment, and I feel like, you know, there's probably a lot of songwriters that write this way. Um, or maybe there's not, I don't know. But, like, I've played so many cover gigs and covered so many songs, you know? So, like, I'm really trying to not sound like anything that I've played, you know? So I know when something sounds like a song that I've covered or, or played at some point. So when I hear something, it sounds like original or sounds, you know, new that I haven't done. That's when I'm like, Oh, okay, here's something, here's something cool. And it can be very simple. Like that song has just sort of this very simple melody, but, um, I don't, I was like, does this sound like something? I don't think so. And I haven't found. Sounds like you. (laughs) I'm sure it's something, but I don't know. 
I, I feel like, you know, you kind of turn it into like how you, how, how one, you know, how I sound or how someone who's writing sounds. It's funny because I have people come on the show that say that they intentionally want to sound like Carrie Underwood and other people come in and they say, you know, my purpose in songwriting is to not sound like anybody. Mm. I mean, you know, the influences are huge. You know, I've always, you know, especially with recording, you know, I record, I I've, I've master, I'm sorry, I produce and record and mix all my own music. So that's a whole nother sort of like control to how I sound. Uh, it's like next level sort of like OCD sound thing, you know, but it, I, I'm also not afraid to like try new things. You know, I invest in some new gear, some new equipment, things that like try to write some with an electric guitar in my hand to do something, you know, different that. I wouldn't otherwise do. You know, I, I don't mind venturing into something that I haven't done before. You know, I find when I use an acoustic guitar, like I tend to write a lot of the same kind of things because, you know, you just tend to play the same chords. But if I play on, if I go to the piano and play something, then I'm doing something different because I have a kind of different style on the piano. Or if I, you know, have an electric guitar and have a certain, you know, ambient, uh, ambient like, you know, effect or something, it, it inspires a different thing. But then I could take that idea and then actually put it to the guitar and or put it to the acoustic and interpret it that way. So all different ways. Where do your ideas come from? Musical or lyrical? Either one. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, you know, it's just having a having an instrument in your hand to practice and play and just try to come up with something or just see what see if something sticks. Do you sit down with the purpose of writing a song, or does it have to happen no. naturally? No, and I never, if I did that, I would never write anything, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is why it just takes a long time for, you know, songs to to reveal themselves to me. But then sometimes I write songs really quickly. A couple of songs that are on this EP, like I wrote them within a week of each other, which is really big for me, because it's not something that always happens. Um, I have songs that are years old that, I, that are half finished, because it's hard to go back and finish them. Going back to the topic of originality, how do you then keep those ideas fresh when you are writing? The melody and stuff is not that hard for me. That that happens natural. That happens when I'm just like, when I have a chord progression or a riff or something, the melody is the easiest thing for me to come up with because I just sing and just, you know, it, that that's natural. Lyrics are, are a lot more difficult because you're trying to find the right story and trying to find the right, you know, hook that like inspires the story. And I tend to write from a very personal experience, although sometimes, you know, like that last song, same old song, that's, that's, I made that song up, but that was inspired by a certain lyric and, you know, I can go to that particular place and come create a story, you know, but most of the songs I write are from a very personal, you know, experience. We're chatting tonight with Sam Luke Chase on the tiny stage on 95.9 WATD. We're up against our first commercial break. And we have a lot more to chat about, more songs to share as well on Almost Famous. Stick around. And now, back to Almost Famous on 95.9 WATD. Welcome back to the tiny stage on Almost Famous 95.9 WATD. Introducing you to independent bands and musicians from across New England. Brought to you by Tiny and Sons Glass. My name is John Shea. Joining us on the tiny stage, it's our first live show of 2021. We have Sam Luke Chase. How you doing, my friend? Excellent. So give another introduction if you would. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Sam Chase. Uh, you can find me at samlukechase.com or at samlukechase on any of the social medias. Um, I'm from Situate. Uh, originally, I, I live in Marshfield now. I'm a uh, musician, singer-songwriter. I also uh, teach a lot of private lessons in the area. I've been doing that for a long time. And uh, came from a musical family, and I have a new EP out, and it's called Old Ocean Sound Volume 1. Awesome. And share your website and any social media links you want to throw out there. Yep, samlukechase.com um, and at samlukechase on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, you can... I've been trying to get back into the social media game a little bit since the EP came out. So, um, you know, best to kind of catch me on those, on those, on the Instagram and Facebook. And give the family a plug because you're not kidding when you say you come from a musical family. No, I mean, you know, everybody probably knows my mother. She is Mama Steph, uh, although she's, you know, just mom to me. But, um, <laughs> you know, she's been doing children's music in the area for a long time. And my father, Steve, he uh, has been running the music at the River Club River Club Music Hall for, you know, the past probably eight, almost 10 years, I feel like. And um, we have a family band called The Gathering that we've been doing since I was, you know, 12. I'm 
going on 35 now. So I play drums in that band. My brother is Matt Chase, who is also a singer-songwriter and uh, Berkeley grad. And, um, you know, you'd think we get together and play music all the time, but uh, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> There's just too many kids in the family. There's too many grandkids running around. There's no time for that. Speaking of which, a new addition to your family... Yep. Um, I am lucky to be a father now. I have a, a daughter who's 15 months old. Her name's Rosie, and she's amazing. She's completely changed my life. Now, is she a fan of Mama Steph yet? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, but she hasn't been able to see Mama Steph in action because, you know, of of, of the pandemic. That's sort of shut down the, the being around children groups of children thing um gotta do some streaming shows <laughs> no she just gets you know uh she just gets mum mum time that that's what my mom my mother is <laughs> she's mum mum so uh she just she hasn't really gotten the musical mama steph show quite yet but she does fall asleep to mama steph music every night so. that's great <laughs> let's uh do another song and then we'll chat some more we have sam luke chase in studio tonight on 95.9 watd yeah this is a song called uh, surfside summer days this is off my uh, last record called lift me up and right. uh, it goes like this.
See, I'm Luke Chase on the Tiny Stage, 95.9 WATD. I forget if it was the last time you were here or the time before that mm-hmm. that you played that song. And we got a call from a singer-songwriter from New Hampshire, Katie Dobbins, who absolutely loved that song. So mm-hmm. I, I told her I'd see if I can get that played again for her. No, that's cool. That's <laughs> on. Thanks, Katie. Appreciate it. How did that one happen? How did that happen? Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, that's that's a song that's, you know, personal sort of love story about how my wife and I kind of met. We were both camp counselors together in Situate doing the uh, rec department kind of thing, summer uh, summer program. And, um, you know, that's just sort of a summer love song. You know, I grew up in Situate down on, on Mina Beach on Surfside. So, um, you know, it's got a lot of personal attachments to it you know i don't remember exactly how how or when i wrote it to be honest sometimes those things just kind of fade away (laughs) that's why i recorded it so that i could remember it you know what i mean (laughs) love it (laughs) so you mentioned being a counselor you also mentioned that you work as a teacher talk about your relationship working with kids in the community yeah i mean i just i've always gotten along with kids you know from I think I was 12 when I first started, you know, doing, you know, summer camp counselor kind of things. And that was always my summer job, you know, until I was probably 20, 20 or so. And, um, you know, it's how, how I how I really met my wife. And we, you know, went to high school together and stuff, but we, we didn't really know each other then. Um, and, you know, the teaching thing always just kind of came natural. I just, I, I feel like I can connect and level with kids in a way that's that's good you know if you can kind of get on the same level as them and and talk to them like they're normal people not that they're you know young and that they don't get it a lot of times they just are a sponge and they're open to to learning and 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 that's when it's fun you know I've, i've been able to teach a lot of kids over the years and some kids have just been like really you know blew me blew me away with like their ability you know, they like surpassed me, you know, a long time ago, you know, <laughs> I'm like, all right, listen, I can't teach you new things like this anymore. You know, they're like, no, please. Like, it's okay. It's okay. I'm like, ah, you know, you're ready to move on. You know? <laughs> Do you find yourself being inspired by your students? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, actually, la- I mean, last year was the first time I started. I had, I had a student. His name's Kevin Cafferty. He's from Norwell. He, uh, he plays in a band. Um, they've been on your show before. And I'm blanking on his name, on their name. Is it Rollover White? Yes, Rollover okay, White. Yeah, there you go. They're great guys. Yeah, yeah, and Kevin, I started teaching him when he was, you know, probably 12 or so, and then like quickly, somehow along the way, it clicked, and he was like, boom, piano, piano genius. And uh, but he started doing some gigs with me. I started inviting him playing on a couple of gigs, which was awesome. It's the first time I've had a student, you know, sit in and play gigs with me. And I remember what it felt like, you know, to sit in with like my older brother Matt with his band. I was probably, you know. 15, 16, something like that when that happened. And to be able to play with, like, musicians that are, like, really good and, and you know, especially playing, like, original music, too, that's – I was – that's what inspired me, you know, as a, as a kid, you know, being able to play, like, real, real music, you know, something that felt, like, original and nobody else was doing. And I got to, you know, do that with, with him for a couple gigs, and then we had a gig canceled at the Tinker Sun because, you know, the pandemic. We'll be back there eventually, you know. Um, again, but um, that that was one of the cool coolest things that's happened so far as as a, as a teacher being able to like have a kid, then be able to play with me. You know, you mentioned the new EP Old Ocean Sound Volume One uh, was recorded at home. Talk about how you were able to put everything together. I should say real quick about that last thing. You know, me getting to play with him really. You know, not him getting to play with me. <laughs> Love it. Um, Recording at home, yeah, that's just something I've always done. My, my, you know, in places that we've lived, I've needed to have a space to be able to create. And you know, we bought a home. We bought a home that's like a 1850s old cape, but it's got an extra bedroom until it, you know, gets filled in with maybe another baby at some point or something. I don't know. But for now, it's my studio. <laughs> well, music is a baby, so <laughs> that's right. It's my baby right now, and. Uh, and so, you know, when it, right now it's like whenever I get the chance to kind of go up there, which is a lot because that's where I'm doing my virtual teaching. But um, that's, you know, 
in between, you know, changing diapers or if I get, if, if, if there's a break where she goes, you know, she would go on a walk with, with my wife, I jump upstairs and run upstairs and record some drums real quick, you know, you don't get too much time to track drums in the house with a baby. So, um, that's sort of how I pieced it together. And once you kind of get things down, then, then I can, you know, mix it and, and produce it and stuff like that. But, um, the writing thing is the hard part. The, the production part can kind of happen a little bit faster because I don't have the, I don't have to worry about being too quiet. On your website, as part of your bio, you talk about living in a DIY world. Elaborate on that. I always knew I wanted to be a musician. You know, this is good for anybody, who, any young person out there who's listening who wants to play music and for a living. You know, it's important that you have a mentor or someone that you, that you aspire to be. And, and I'm not talking about someone who's on Instagram or YouTube or something like that. You know, an actual human being. That, that to me, was the actual experience of playing music was so important. But I always knew it was, wasn't going to be easy, and you know, I knew I need, needed to be able to do many things. So DIY, you know, obviously do it yourself. I just, you know, I always wanted to build up skills to be able to be self-sustaining. So, you know, for example, I play multiple instruments. I went to Berkeley, but I got a degree in engineering and production because I wanted to be able to record myself. And then... Um, you know, you start to do gigs and you start to figure out what kind of gigs you want to do and you start doing gigs for a long time and then you want to change and add new gigs. And so you're just trying to figure out different ways to grow and expand what, what it is you're doing without kind of selling the farm there a little bit. So it's, it's, it's hard to kind of, everybody's doing their own thing. Everybody's trying to figure out how to, what their niche is and stuff like that. So for me, right now, you know, my, my music that I'm recording, it's all... It's all me, you know, I'm playing all the instruments, I'm writing the tunes, I'm producing and recording and all that stuff and mixing. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Would I love to be in the studio with a bunch of musicians and a string section and like, you know, somebody else mixing and recording and, and engineering for me? Absolutely. Um, but that's just sort of where I'm at with it. We're chatting with Sam Luke Chase here on WATD. Let's do another song. What's next on your set list tonight? Yeah, I'm going to dive into the... Uh, dive into the old archives here um we were talking earlier about an old song that i guess had sort of some steely dan vibes to it um uh, a little story about this one this is this is called just another girl it was off my first record called songs for someone and i, I recorded this when i was going to berkeley and did it as part of a project but uh the, one of the guitar players is a friend of mine who was playing in a band with my with my long-time bass player and long-time drummer and stuff. His name is Yohei Nakamura. He is out in L.A. He is, is Stevie Wonder's guitar player. Oh, wow. Yeah. Some guy named That's Stevie. That's your resume for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, he was, he was, I always loved his playing. He's such a nice guy. And I got him to play on this, on this project that I was doing. And it was, you know, one of my, one of my production, you know, finals or something. And anyways, the recording, I ended up keeping the recordings and putting it on the, on the album. And uh, Yohei, you, you know, if you, if you check it out, Yohei, you can hear Yohei's playing on it. He, he sounded great as always. All right, let's hear it. Sam Luke Chase, 95.9 WATD. This morning, and tell the world just who I am. A simple man with too much time on his hands. Yeah, yeah. And as the night approaches, I'm gonna find me a real nice girl. And oh, but every time it's the same old thing, and I can't find what I'm looking for. Well, I sing, oh, you're just another name that I. Not remember. Oh, you're just another face in a crowd that can keep on passing by. And oh, you're just another day in a week I wish I would end now. Oh, you're just another girl. In the darkness, 
me right between the eyes. A sudden flame from God knows where has it made its way on through. Oh, I never said that I would love you. Oh, I never told you you were beautiful. I just let you slip away for good. There ain't nothing now that I can do but sing. Oh. Just another face in a crowd that I keep on passing by. Oh, you're just another day in a week that I wish would end now. Oh, you're just another girl. Sam Luke Chase, 95.9 WATD on the tiny stage. Nice job, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. So it seems like it's going to be a little while before live music is back in full force. And I'm interested to know what, in your opinion, people can do right now, listeners, to support their favorite independent musicians. Um, I mean, honestly, you know, everybody's got, or not everybody, you know, people. some people have the the live streams going virtual tip jars all those things are very important i mean if you if you tune in if you if you like someone if there's someone that you've been following that you've gone and seen um or you like their music or you just like them personally you know or you know them um you know when you throw them a couple of bucks on the, on the venmo or whatever that's that's huge if somebody's you know putting out uh, an ep or something like that you know and you want to you know buy it on itunes uh that's cool too um if you want to stream it that's fine too. Um, if you want to share it on social media, all those things, you know, all those things help a, a, a musician, you know, continue to have the drive to want to keep playing, keep making music. Um, but obviously, you know, if you're if you're a performer and you're exclusively making your income as a performer, you know, definitely, you know, chip in a few bucks here and there if you if you like their if you like their music if you like their if you check out their live streams because uh, I know people that would. Definitely appreciate it. Give your new EP another plug, if you would. Yeah, it's called Old Ocean Sound, Volume 1. You can stream it on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, you know, all, where, wherever you stream music. Um, if you'd like to purchase it, you can get it on uh, iTunes. It's just available digitally right now. Um, but, you know, any any sort of... Any sort of sharing on Spotify or on uh, social media is is greatly appreciated because um, all that kind of stuff helps you know helps it grow through the you know the platform all that all that algorithm stuff that I don't really get but uh, is important to like help independent artists get their music you know out there um, it's great because things like Spotify and things like that are are great because everybody uses them and you're able to get your music on there but I think I just saw it today it was somebody posted something. Um, a thousand streams is like four dollars and sixty cents or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> a thousand streams is a lot. Is is a lot of streams. It's four bucks. But on know? the other hand, too, that's you know a thousand people that may not have heard your music before. Right. Or it's me streaming myself. You know, a thousand times. Just hit the repeat button. And go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty seconds is a stream, everybody. Okay. Um, but like you know, sharing it. Those are simple things that people might not think about, but like you know, they they help. Um, helps just 
get get the song out there and it doesn't cost you anything all it costs you is like you know a second to click and put it on your on your profile or whatever once live music is back in full force any venues that you're looking forward to playing again or for the first time yeah i mean i'm just i'm excited to um play these songs somewhere live you know do a, a release show somewhere there'll, there'll probably be a volume two out i would imagine before you know music comes back too so um you know being able to have a cd release show with with these songs you know with the band and and uh things like that i, I would definitely looking forward to that that show in particular very cool let's do another song what's next on your yeah, list yeah i'm just gonna tune up real quick um we got two more left and while you're tuning share your website again my website is samlukechase.com, um, samlukechase.com, um, at samlukechase on Instagram, at samlukechase on Facebook. Um, there are, you know, there's some other Sam Chases out there, so just make sure it's Sam Luke Chase, so that way you know it's me. The um, only Sam Luke Chase. That's it. There's only one I've found, so that's, I'm good. I'm good there. Um, let me just get this one. Okay. Um, this song is, we were talking about something earlier that kind of, um, kind of brought, brought this song into, made me think of this one. But anyways, this is, um, oh, I remember we were talking about kind of my students and how it's cool to be able to, you know, for me to play with my, you know, a student who's, who I started with teaching at 12 or 10 and, you know, we're playing a bar gig together, right? Um, I grew up playing music and looking uh, looking up to my brother, he's nine years older than me, so he was, you know, doing it earlier than I was. And having the opportunity to do that and play, you know, going to New York City when I was, you know, eighteen and playing drums and clubs and stuff like that, had a, such a profound impact on me. And you know, playing original music, it, it was, you know, that was like felt like real. It was real, you know, and and it was real, but like it felt real, you know, and. Um, I ended up writing a song sort of inspired by that, and uh, it's called Just Believe. It is the third track on the new EP. Let's hear it. Sam Luke Chase, 95.9 WATD. Well, I remember thinking I want to be just like him. Young, impressionable kid in love with his music Always felt like each song was gonna be a big hit A lot of people don't know what it means to make it And night after night been playing for the bar flies 2 a.m. closing time, not a woman in sight Never did get caught up in all the glory Just a couple of brothers Yeah, we did it for the story If anybody's out there Listen to me closely Just fight for the dream That you've been chasing your whole damn life No time for excuses Cause we've all been
Amazing. Sam Luke Chase joining us tonight on the Tiny Stage on 95.9 WATD. We are up against our final break of the night. We have one more song to share and a little bit more to talk about as well right here on 95.9 WATD, so stick around. And now, back to Almost Famous on 95.9 WATD. For the final time this evening on 95.9 WATD, we're on the tiny stage. My name is John Shea. This is Almost Famous, introducing you to independent bands and musicians from across New England. Brought to you by Tiny and Sons Glass. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Almost Famous Radio and subscribe to our podcast at almostfamousradio.com. And tonight we're being joined on the tiny stage by Sam Luke Chase. How's it going in there? It's going great, man. Sounding awesome. Thank you. Remind us again of who you are. I am Sam Luke Chase. Uh, I'm a singer-songwriter. Grew up in Situate, live here in Marshfield. Um, I have a new EP out. It's called Old Ocean Sound Volume 1, available uh, wherever you stream music, as well as on iTunes. And share that website and any social media links that are out there. Yep, samlukechase.com or uh, at samlukechase on Instagram and Facebook. Excellent. We talked about this just a little bit earlier tonight, but um, we, we mentioned that you are basically doing a lot of your music yourself, playing you know all the instruments, doing all your own recording and, and producing. Do you have any advice that you can share with any aspiring musicians that are listening right now that are thinking about writing their own music or producing their own music? Yeah, I mean, just there's so much information out there right now on YouTube and whatever, with especially when it comes to audio. Um, it's actually a little overwhelming. Uh, I went to music school for it, and it was less overwhelming than what you see online. Um, but if you have a passion for, for music and and you want to create, I mean, the best thing to do is to be able to learn how to record. And it, there's programs out there that are that are good. I'm a, I'm a Pro Tools guy, but um, there's, there's, there's simpler programs that, to get you in the door because creating is, is, is where you take your skill and actually apply it to, like, make music, you know? And that, that's really, especially right now, where if you can't be playing with other people, you know, you can still create um you can still create and, 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 and be sort of productive that way and just, um, you know, get the sense of, of, of what a production would be like, you know, with, with all these tools that you have, all these programs. So I just say start simple, you know, and then uh, you can always go get crazy from there. Fantastic. That's Sam Luke Chase. We have time for one more song before we wrap things up. What are we going up to 10 o'clock with? So this is, uh, this is the song about my, my daughter, Rosie. Um, I wrote this after finding out that, we were going to be having a a baby and it's the first song that i wrote about her and uh it's called ready for rosie let's hear it sam luke chase thank you again get home safely and we'll talk to you soon sounds good
call on a Tuesday and said I need you to come home right now.